Hey, what's up, you guys? And welcome to another episode of How to Watch a Movie as a Christian. My name's Riley. I'm Peter. And I'm Ben. How to Watch Home Alone. As a Christian, guys, do you watch Home Alone every year? Yeah, of course. Of course? Why do you say course? Because it's an amazing movie, and my five-year-old Jane loves it. Loves Home Alone? Yeah. Do you like Home Alone, PJ? I do. It was very formative as a kid, but to be honest, as an adult, I don't watch it that often. Why? I don't know. Not that often, like once a year. No. Oh. Not even once a year. I mean, I don't seek out to watch it. Once a year. Are you cold? That's crazy. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, we happen to be outside, right? <laughs> I guess so. We're outside because the wow. little studio area is under construction and because it's Christmas time. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, why not be outside here in front of the church? It snowed a few days ago. So we're talking about Home Alone. Now, the thing about Home Alone, I've written about this before. But in my opinion, Home Alone is an absolutely, without a doubt, a perfect movie. There is not one frame. There is not one waveform. There is not one scene. <laughs> you know, sometimes oh you're, uh, people say Out that you overstate your case. Nobody's ever said that. Nobody's ever said ever. that. You're right. <laughs> Who directed it? Chris Columbus. So here's the thing. Home Alone is a 19, Harry one and two as well. 1990 film. Okay, so 1990, uh, directed by Chris Columbus. He did the Harry Potter movies. He did Mrs. Doubtfire. I mean, come on. Uh, the writer was John Hughes, who wrote The Breakfast Club, as well as Ferris Bueller's Day Off. So, so classic day out. 90s, early 2000s guy. And the composer... John Williams. The everybody. John Williams. Oh, really? I'm telling you, P, you're wrong on that one. <laughs> I'm not. You're saying. missing. You're the way you say that you don't like this movie, and that's why you don't watch it. I think you're wrong. To quote Home Alone, I find your lack of faith <laughs> disturbing. <laughs> so here's the thing. The reason why I think it's a perfect movie is because everything that makes a movie good, Home Alone does. Now it's a family movie. It's a comedy and. I don't know if people loved it at the time. Um, it's sort of, it, you could see, could you see how this movie could be forgotten? Like, it's a kid's movie, right? So how has it stayed so long? Yeah, like to give credit to the movie, I haven't seen it since I was probably, I don't know, a young adult at some point. It's Were been you a, not a young adult right now? <laughs> I guess that's true. I'm thinking like early 20s, you know, I'm 30 now. So it's been a several years since I've seen it last. But wild to give credit to the movie, which I do really enjoy. I have no <laughs> I I can remember so many of the scenes, so many of the lines, okay, just so many of the quote characters. a few. Let's hear you quote a few. This is a, a man who hasn't seen the movie in what, eight years, seven years? Yeah, almost a decade. And I'm sure. You're able to just quote it. Go. Let's More go. or less. Go. Quote I every know, line. I know for sure there's when he's putting the aftershave on and it goes like. Yeah. Classic. That's a classic one. I on remember cover. I remember most of the pranks that he does with the paint can and the jacks on the floor and all that. And the Michael Jordan cut out. Yeah. Uh, I remember I think his uncle calls him a little jerk. Look what you did, you, you little, little jerk. jerk. <laughs> and then uh, I remember the mom going. I don't know if she was on the airplane or in the airport, but what an awful mom, by airplane. the way. Airplane. She's on the airplane okay. in Home Alone 1. She's in the airport in Home Alone 2. Yeah. The fact that this happened twice to poor little Kevin McAllister, who I remember the name of, is pretty shocking. Yeah. Like, that's Do you not- remember, like, so many gags, like, every car that pulls into the driveway hits, hits the, the statue? Thing, yeah. <laughs> I remember the, uh, I remember most of the, Pranks that he did on the people, well, not pranks, they're more like traps. The traps that he mm-hmm. puts on the uh, the wet bandits, they call themselves, yeah, right? Yeah. Look at me go. <laughs> the second I, movie, they're called the sticky You bandits. literally <laughs> know this whole movie. I remember thinking, this, they should be dead. These, every single one of Any these. Any one of those would have killed me. Would have killed yeah, them. 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they didn't die. Okay, how about this? Finish this quote. Buzz, your girlfriend. 
woof or something like that. Right? Yeah. Well done. And then he goes, the, it's a, <laughs> to quote a film in the film, he's watching that one thing. Angels while, with filthy yeah, souls. While waiting for pizza. And he's like, Merry Christmas, you filthy animal with the Tommy gun. And I have Wow, I remember a lot of this movie. Yeah, it's for real. That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. So okay. staying I power. feel better. You know, some, one thing that we talk about as Christians is uh, that the greatest story ever told is the gospel. It's the story of salvation. It's a true story. It's, it's in the scripture, and we live into that story. We are in the story of God, and it's the greatest story ever told. And if you've ever seen a movie and went, that was great, in my opinion, the thing that makes that movie great is that it mirrors or in some way parallels the greatest story ever told. Now, sometimes that's literally true. Like it very much, there's a Christ figure, there's a salvation or a sacrifice or, you know, heroism. But sometimes that's true negatively as well. What we call an anti-hero, even in a negative way, anti-heroes and tragedies still mirror the greatest story ever told. And I honestly believe Home Alone does that. Yeah, I'm very curious at this point. Okay. Because I'm thinking perfect movie by all the ways that we've talked about things that are movies what makes a movie perfect i'm like yeah of course but when you're associating to scripture i'm i'm feeling a little a little lost we're getting wind yeah so help me out help me help them cold help wind. pj we don't know we don't know what you're talking about okay how about this uh can you try to guess what he's talking about i'm curious i have been trying maybe it's because i'm just too cold but okay here's what i'm talking about the first thing is the presence of theme. Literally, the story is called Home Alone. And in the movie, he says to his mom, I wish I woke up tomorrow and all you jerks were gone. I wish I didn't have a family. And she says, Kevin, you'd be pretty upset if you woke up tomorrow and you were home alone. So it's like, it's thematically, it's so crystal clear, almost to the point of like cliche. Uh, but that theme is actually very deep because it's the theme of a, what is he, a 10 or 11 years old or something like that? I believe he's 11. Yeah. He's a, this, this little kid yeah. who just wishes his family would go away because they treat him like a jerk, right? So thematically, it's rooted in his character the story's called Home Alone, and he wishes they would just all go away and that he could wake up tomorrow and be home alone. Okay, so theme, boom, you got a movie. Not just a plot of a movie, but a, a theme to a movie. Well, in addition to that theme, you also have the antithesis characters. You have what's called the, um, what do you call it in, in storytelling? Foil. You have the foils. So in a story, a foil. A foil so is a... Uh, a foil is a, like a side character or an event that happens to the main character that forces them to come to grips with reality or something like that. So the foils are uh, two burglars named... Wally. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> One starts with the letter H. Marv. Oh. Marv, yeah. Okay, H. And hey. Nope. <laughs> Harry. Harry. Yep. Oh. So, can you quote any of their lines? I, just, I know Home Alone 1, they're the wet bandits. And then Home Alone 2, they're the sticky bandits because yeah, they put glue yeah. on there and yeah. steal from the Santas. Yeah, but yeah, I don't yeah. remember much of what they say. So, the, the reason why they are a foil to the main character is that uh, your main character wants to just live life alone. And your foil characters, your, your side characters... They exploit you and hurt you and destroy you if you get what you want. You see what I'm saying? You couldn't have written a more perfect foil, right? <laughs> is this going to work? <laughs> cool. Maybe it's, the audio is probably jacked up right now. No, it's great. Jack it up. It's good. Okay, so you have a foil characters that perfectly exploit the plot and the theme of the main character. Then you have an antithesis character in Old Man Marley. Do you know who that is? Yeah. He's the guy with the shovel. Yeah, he's the guy with the shovel. Good job. The neighbor. Right? So what we, what we see is that Old Man Marley is really scary. Buzz tells this 
story about how he murdered people and stuff like that. So it's urban legend. It's not real. But we, we learn by the end of the movie that um, old man Marley is alone and he's been alone for like 20 years because he couldn't get along with his family. So old man Marley represents who Kevin will become. You know? If. Never saw that. You never saw that? Never saw that. It's kind of a big duh as you're saying it. Um, wow. That's interesting. All right. Remember the conversation in the church? Yeah. Where Kevin's like, why don't you just reconcile with your, your son and see them again? And he's like, well, what if, I, what if they don't accept me back? And Kevin's like, well, you'll you, never th- know. at least you'll know. Yeah. And it's this sweet conversation about the very thing that Kevin himself wow. is struggling with. How there will he reconcile with his family? So, so perfect That's writing. Good. You have the antithesis. Here's who your character will become if he continues being an idiot. And that character, Old Man Marley, is something scary and dark and, oh. and something you do not want. But not only that, he comes in at the end and bangs Harry and Marv on the head with a shovel. He's the one who ends up saving Kevin. And somehow that's what knocks them out. And that's what knocks <laughs> them out. Yeah, it's... It's brilliant. And he reconciles with his family. And he reconciles with his family. Why? Because in that church scene, remember there's this beautiful line where Kevin says, uh, why are you at church? And old man Marley says, well, everyone's welcome at church. So it's this moment of like redemption and realization is happening in this church kind of religious setting that just kind of speaks to like the, it, I don't know, it's just like metaphorical and it, it's like the heart of the matter. And that's literally the next moment is when Kevin leaves the church and goes, when those guys come back, I'm going to be ready. Bum, 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 bum. And he goes and sets up the traps and stuff. That's really interesting to think about. I think there's more layers that I haven't touched. Maybe because I watched it growing up, it kind of stayed in that childlike place in my mind and I never let it age with me. Um, and I think there's something to say about that because me and Jane watch it similarly. And even my dad, I remember watching it with my dad, and he had this one recliner, and, um, you know, they're getting hit with bricks and whatnot. And he goes, <laughs> and he kicks in his recliner, and that's me and Jane <laughs> when we watch it, too. It's just so funny and ridiculous. And, um, and it'll always have me going back to watch it because it's funny and good. And it's Hannah's favorite Christmas movie. Hannah's favorite Christmas movie? Yeah. I thought Elf was the family favorite for you guys. No, that's She's the favorite the Halloween movie. That's true. Oh. That's Ben's favorite scary movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spooky. No, Elf is Elf is a, a family favorite, but Hannah's is Home Alone. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's amazing. I One and two, great. We tried to go... For the new one recently, I think maybe last year we tried watching the new one. Home Sweet Home Alone? Yeah. Should we talk about that for a second? Just for a second, because it's horrible. It's horrible. It's really bad. Buzz returns as a policeman, um, and and that was sad. Uh, Ellie Kemper, is that her actual name? Aaron from The Office? Yeah. Yeah. Is in it. and She's one of the robbers. Yeah, and... and in my house, she's not liked. We don't like her. She's really annoying. Sorry, because Aaron. of Aaron from the Office. Yeah, <laughs> Ellie, whatever your name and, is. And uh, and it was just really pathetic. Is Home Alone two basically just Home Alone one in New York? Home Alone two. Am I was remembering made, that correctly? Yeah, it is. So they, what happened is when they were making the. I learned this from Netflix's show, The Movies That Made Us. They talk about Home Alone, and. Uh, Home Alone 2 was made the very next year because they didn't want Kevin or uh, Macaulay Culkin to grow up and get too old. And it was a huge hit, Home Alone mm-hmm. 1. Yeah. So they literally, John Hughes, the writer, wrote basically the same exact movie. And there's almost all the same gags, um, but fresh. Mm-hmm. And so they, they get rid of a lot of the... Um, so Kevin McAllister interacts with a lot of the townspeople in the first one. But in the second one, he interacts with a lot of the hotel people and the toy store people. So they just kind of move interactions to a different thing. 
Um, it's basically the same movie, but and it's almost just as good. But there's one crucial difference, and that is that the the antithesis character, which is the remember the scary lady with the the bird lady, bird lady, yeah, yeah the birds on her. She thematically doesn't represent anything. Yeah. Mm. Whereas old man Marley, he literally has the same struggle as Kevin, but 20 years later, right, or mm. as an old man. So it doesn't quite come full circle the same it way. It doesn't. At the end, her and Kevin become best friends. He goes to her and says, Kinda I'll weird. be your friend, and he gives her turtle doves. And it, oh, yeah. watching it now as an adult, I was like, Creepy. that's gross, actually. Yeah. I'm, weird. I'm weirded out by this. Yeah. Whereas with Old Man Marley, it's like super sweet. Yeah. So that's like the main difference. There's also a big difference in that Kevin makes it to the airport this time. So you're like, oh, you're not a horrible parent for leaving him at home. Oh. Uh, but they wait. got to the airport and he was putting his batteries in his little mic, his like recorder. And he, there's a guy Which who was I wearing, had that, by the way. Did you really? As a kid. Well, I had that. Kevin McAllister's dad was wearing like this color jacket with a red scarf, and there was another guy with the same haircut wearing the same jacket with the same scarf. Dad, wait up! And so he follows him, and he goes to okay, New York. Okay, I'm remembering that. That's cool. Yeah, it's super cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's always bothered me about the movies? Which ones? Both. Home Alone 1, one and, two. and 2. Yeah. Is that Mom... Does she have a name? Mom rushes... Mom, yeah, I don't what know. is her name? I don't know. She rushes home. Peter, that's the dad's that's, name. That's okay, yeah. She rushes home, does everything she can. It's like incredibly stressful and horrible for everyone around her. And she gets there like 5 minutes before yeah. her family <laughs> each time. <laughs> and you're like, was that worth it? You know, you probably spent 18 times much to get there. That's true. But it wow. it also would be a weird <coughs> movie if uh Maybe they didn't come home right after, so yeah. I get why, but it is a little silly. It's part of the comedy of it, but it also shows the lengths that she goes, right? She put all this sacrifice and effort, even if it was futile and, and silly, it just shows her angst as a mom yeah. to atone for her forgetting. And how right? effective it is to worry. And that's the thing is that at the very end, when she does come through the door, she and Kevin have a little moment where they both say sorry right so the the movie is not about a kid being a jerk and saying sorry but also a mom being a jerk and neglectful and also saying sorry so it sounds like it's full of essential devices to push the narrative as opposed to just random plot devices or characters that have nothing to do with anything but they just help a moment or a scenario or whatever but it sounds like Home Alone 1 is just very, very, from start to finish, well thought of. And then Home Alone 2 is just those thoughts recycled in New York. Yeah. And one like, maybe less important question, because I've heard it both ways, for this movie and a lot of other movies, would you guys consider this a Christmas movie? Because I've heard a side of the argument is it's not a Christmas movie if it doesn't celebrate Christmas itself. Whoa. And what okay. do you mean by that? Celebrate Christmas meaning what? Celebrate the tradition of Christmas. The movie is about the story of Christmas or the characters of Christmas or something of the matter. I don't necessarily agree with it. That's just yeah. what I've heard that made me go. It is <laughs> a valid question, though, because for the first time this Christmas season, we watched Die Hard as like a part of it. Because it's like on every That's Christmas like meme, movie right. playlist or, you know, on Letterboxd Christmas movies. And then there's like Edward Scissorhands. And what? Yeah. Really? And, uh, and we usually watch, um, when I was a kid, we watched during the 12 days of Christmas, Harry Potter. Because in each movie, there's a Christmas scene in it. Yeah. So it's like right. fall kind of hmm. thing. But that's a good question. And I think some movies... I don't know, Die Hard, it's a good reason to watch Die Hard around Christmas time because it's on Christmas Eve or whatever. Yeah. This movie is a Christmas movie. I think it is, and it's mainly because of that scene in the church. The scene in the church is Old Man Marley's granddaughter rehearsing for the Christmas Eve Mass, mm -hmm. right? And that's the moment of realization for both him and Kevin, and it is in a church. They're talking about 
the coming of Christ. They're singing a song about it. It's just like the intersection, like the kind of the crux moment, the, the mixture of like stuff to overcome and redemption all happens at the same moment in this like Christmas setting mm-hmm. where they're talking about Christmas. And in a much more shallow way, it's about traveling to get somewhere on Christmas Day, yeah. uh, about the toy store. Um, you know, stuff like that. It's very holiday times. Mm-hmm. All your family and cousins in the house arguing and bickering. Hey, Russell. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> so that's really all there is to say about Home Alone. There's not much more to say. There's literally there? nothing left to say. <laughs> yeah, it's good. How are you guys watching Home Alone? You just are? You already did. So did I. I'm going to watch it again. Just because PJ won't. I want PJ to watch it again. And on this video, when we post it, I want you to write as a comment your breakdown of your thoughts. Okay. I can do that. (laughs) I will watch it home. Probably not alone. (laughs) Speaking of which, I think it actually would be cool if people suggested movies to watch. So should we ask? Yes, that would be awesome. If you have any movies, Christmas or otherwise, that you would want us to watch and talk about, please just let us know in the comments below. That would be sweet. Yeah, that would be sweet. That would be sweet. (laughs) That would be so sweet. (laughs) Really, really sweet, you guys. Thank you guys for being so sweet. I'm cold. And uh, that's how to watch Home Alone as a Christian. We are Pacific Parable, and we are cold, and we will see you at church. Thank you.